The French Grand Prix is inevitably a huge event for Renault, its home race, but the team seems to have piled even more pressure and expectation onto itself this year because it's promised us a massive car upgrade that's going to transform its fortunes, or so the team tells us. I've got Jake Boxall Leg and Ben Anderson here with me to interrogate those claims and have a look at maybe what the reality will be in comparison to the bold claims that we're hearing. Ben, we are so used to Renault talking a good game. Is there any reason ahead of its home race that we should believe it more this time than we have in the past? Perhaps. I mean, Canada was a, was a really good race for Renault, their strongest of the season. But that's compared to a pretty low bar, I would say, from the first part of the season. Um, their performance has really pinballed all over the place. Uh, Poor start to the season in Australia, some gradual progress through to China, then some randomness really in Baku and Spain, and slightly, slightly more normal uh, head of the midfield-ish in Monaco, but poor in the race, I think, pace-wise, and then strong in Canada. But also they were flattered um, when you consider Valtteri Bottas making an absolute mess of Q3, Max Verstappen being knocked out in Q2 by Kevin Magnussen clattering into the wall. So Daniel Ricciardo qualifying on second row, I mean, it was great to see Renault cars up there and exciting for him, but on pure performance terms, they were at best fourth and slightly closer to the outright pace than they were in 2018. But then Canada is a very specific form of racetrack and probably says more about the engine than anything else. So going to France, much more conventional circuit, I'd say the jury's still out, especially concerning the chassis. JBL, obviously when the covers come off the car in France, you and Giorgio Piola are going to be inspecting every tiny detail of it, looking for all the new bits and yeah, trying to work out exactly how substantial this package is. How likely is it in modern F1 that a team can bolt on a load of new pieces and actually make a, a genuinely big step up the order? It's a bit difficult because you put all of those parts on and even if you've got an increase in performance, you don't necessarily know which ones have worked and which ones haven't. So it's always a bit difficult. That's why teams go with this sort of marginal gains basis of like one update with the one race, another one, another one, another one, because then they can go, okay, that one's worked, next one on the, on the path. You throw a load of upgrades at it, you're not sure which one's worked, so you could go, okay, maybe that one didn't and that one didn't, and you take them off, but then they don't work together so well. So it's always a massive gamble to do it. Um, Obviously, it, it's worked out for Mercedes this season. Um, in pre-season testing, they turned up with one car that was very, very different to the one they'd run week one on. And that's been the basis for basically their relentless domination this season. So it can work. Um, does Renault have the resources to make it work, though? That's really the question. And nothing really at the moment suggests that they can. I think it's definitely going to be an improved car, certainly. Um, there's, there's still a lot to do with it. But... Um, yeah, it's a bit of a gamble. In fairness, Renault have been promising this big French upgrade for a while, haven't they? But you obviously look at the cars in close detail through every weekend since pre-season testing. How have Renault evolved on the chassis and aero side over the season so far? From the aero's perspective, which is obviously the stuff we can see, um, there's been small changes here and there. Um, you go to So I think the first few rounds, there wasn't too much change. I think there was a slightly different specification front wing in the first after the first couple of races but then Spain came um, they redressed the rear end of the car uh, you can't see it on this picture uh, they'd obviously taken it off for Canada but for Spain and Monaco they had like a new T-wing design so that was just for those two circuits at least had worked out okay we're lacking a little bit of rear end downforce there's still this loophole uh, where we can put bits of body work in so they're trying to essentially just get the downforce level up. Um, for Monaco, they'd come up with those bunny ears that you can see there. Um, that's just a... They're like the old Honda um, Dumbo wings, aren't they, from 2006? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they, there are a few teams doing that now. Uh, obviously, we saw Red Bull with them in Mon uh, Montreal as well. So there's been little bits and pieces. It's coming in fits and spurts, and I think... They have been pinning their hopes on this large upgrade package for a while now. That's why they've been rel relatively conservative with their upgrade plan, their path, their strategy. Um, so they'll have had time to work on it. And so in an ideal world, it'll all work harmoniously. They'll be at the head of the midfield again. But we've seen a midfield this year. Every weekend, mm. there's a different team at the top of it. 
And arguably, this season wasn't supposed to be about Renault trying to lead the midfield again. It was supposed to be bridging that gap to the top teams. And so far, you know, like you say, qualifying perhaps in Canada aside, which was somewhat fortuitous, but Ricardo did a good job. They failed, utterly failed to achieve the promises they were giving us this time last year, effectively. Now, Ben, they did give us quite an interesting description of what had been holding them back on the engine side up until a couple of races ago, some reliability concerns. And in fairness, the engine, even in Canada, did look pretty good. So it seems that maybe they're sorted on that side. And for once, a team that we've often associated with producing a good, solid car and the engine side letting it down, it almost feels like it's flipped this time, doesn't it? And perhaps the chassis is where Renault needs to improve. Yeah, absolutely. I think... It- the one piece of really good news is that on the engine side, Renault does seem to at least have a proper baseline now. Finally. Finally. I mean, they started the season with you know high hopes for the, the engine development program they'd implemented, and things looked decent. But of course, in Bahrain, they were on for a, a decent result, and both cars you know, failed right near the end of the race. And since then, it came as a bit of a shock to Renault. They've had to detune the engine. Now it seems that they've got more on top of those problems, they're running perhaps more towards what would have been their expectation as normal at the start of the season. So now, if you can bank that performance, then at least you can turn attention towards the car. And that's the area still, I'm not so sure that they've really got everything sorted. As I mentioned earlier, this kind of random yo-yoing of their performance relative to the rest of the field, depending on which track you go to, suggests they haven't got perhaps the greatest understanding of how their car works. They've already mentioned that they're struggling, like some, many teams are, to get the most out of the, the 2019 Prelly tyres, and a lot of that will relate to how much downforce they're able to, to generate. So France is a massive test, and it's worrying, I think, when a team puts so much pressure on itself by saying, oh, we're going to bring this huge update. Obviously, it's the home race. Obviously, Renault wants to perform at its best in front of the home fans, but considering where they started the season, the best they can really hope for, unless there are some random events again, like Bottas struggling in Q3, like the Red Bulls being off their game, and Daniel Ricciardo pulling out a magic lap in Q3, they're going to be best of the rest at the head of the midfield, maybe slightly clear, but that's allowing for not allowing for Haas returning to a more normal performance, or McLaren getting one over the works team. And best of the rest is where they finished last season. So ultimately, that doesn't represent progress. 